81, 82, 83, 84. I was curious. So you have your cotter pin and your clevis pin. You put the clevis pin in, it's holding something, and then you put the cotter pin in, and then you bend the legs, and then you move on to your next project, and you just, that's it, end the story. But how far should you bend the legs of your cotter pin? So there's two ways to do it. One way is you bend the legs just a little bit, so just 15 degrees, nothing crazy there. The other way is you bend them really far and you pretty much wrap them back around the cotter pin. Uh, you wrap it back around the clevis pin itself, like this guy. So the legs come out and they bend all the way up around. Or the legs come out and just bend a little. So just 15 degrees. So which one's stronger? Which one holds better? Which one's safer? In reading, but never in testing, I've read that this is the safer way of doing it because the theory is if you bend the legs 15 degrees, they are, it's hard to pull it out. Like you really, it's really hard to pull this thing out of here. That actually really hurt my fingers. I don't recommend doing that. That's kind of painful now. Uh, so the theory is if you bend them just a little bit, it holds. And if it holds, job done, move on to the next thing. There's a lot of work to do in sailboat rigging. So why fart around and spend so much time on your cotter pin legs? The concern is that bending them just a little, stuff can hit them, they can get yanked, they can get snagged. I mean, they do stick out there pretty far. They're just like, boom, out into the air. So the concern is that if something yanks it out, well, now you don't have your cotter pin in there anymore. And that means that your clevis pin can just fall out. And then if the clevis pin was holding up, say, your stays, because it's rigging, well, now your mask can fall. Kind of bad. So, the alternative is to bend the legs so far around the cotter pin, uh, the clevis pin, just bend them all the way up and around so that they can't fall out. They're, they're more wrapped, they're tighter, they're not sticking out into the middle of everything, kind of like these guys are. So then the theory is that they won't get snagged. And then it's safer because they hold on better and everything's great. This is actually really hard to do. Like you have to like really work at it to like get these legs bent up and around the, the clevis pin. It's, it was tricky. This is the way I usually do it, where I just put a screwdriver, blade screwdriver, I just slide it up in here and then just boop, bend it 90 degrees, push up, done. They're bent 15 degrees, it's in, it's solid, and I move on to the next thing because when you're working on rigging, there are a lot of these that you need to work on, so quickly is important because they pay you by the hour and no one wants a slow rigger. I've read about which one has what properties, but I've never actually tested to see what properties. So in my reading, when it talked about cotter pins, it said you only want to bend them a little bit because as you bend them, you work hard in the metal, which then stresses the metal and then makes it more prone to breaking. And if one of the legs breaks off, well guess what, it doesn't matter how far you bent the leg, it's gone. And that means that nothing is holding the cotter pin in and it can just fall out. So yes, ideally the cotter pins are always set with their head up and legs down. And then it doesn't matter how you bend the legs because this is how it'll stay. But this isn't how it stays, it never stays this way. Every time I go up, I always, you know, turn the clevis pin so that the cotter pin is pointing up and then you go sailing and the stays are moving and everything's shimming around up there and whoop, it's upside down. They always want to be upside down. I've never found them right side up. They're always spun somehow. So, when it turns like that, you need the legs to hold them in. So that's why the idea of bending them really far, well now it's like super secure. It can't fall out. But in reading, not in practice, it says that when you bend them really far, it stresses the metal and then it's more prone to break. And it's not that these are just going to spontaneously break one day. What happens is stuff hits them. Uh, bird, hail, stones, like wh whatever's flying through the air can fly into them, smack them, hit them. And those all might sound like stuff that's, you know, what bird flies into a mast. Then you have stuff on your mast, you have halyards, you have downhauls, you have sails themselves. All these things can smack into your rigging and make a mess. Like, I mean, how often have you been at anchor and some dude's mast is just, you know, 
banging away. It's clang, 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 clang. And especially when they have a bunch of halyards and they're all kind of loose and they're just clang, 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 clang. It is special. So all those halyards might be knocking into the cotter pins and might bust up the legs and then the clevis pin might work its way out and then the dude's mast might just fall down and go quiet for you. Peace and quiet. That's where the idea of bending these really far becomes an issue. So you bend the legs really far, you stress it, you strain it, and then stuff can break. It gets hit, it's already stressed, and then it can just snap. I've read about doing them this way instead of doing them this way, and that's fine, that's in reading, but I've never actually tested it. So I did a test, and I went to West Marine, I bought some clevis pins and a bunch of cotter pins and then I just bent the cotter pin legs until they broke. It was a pretty straightforward test. A very exhausting test. I don't recommend uh, doing it for fun because yeah, it, it was a long time. So I took one clevis pin and I held it in a vise with the cotter pin pointing up and I grabbed onto a leg and I just bent the leg 15 degrees until the leg broke. So one cycle, one bending cycle, was taking it from straight, down, and then back up. So down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up, like that, 487 times for it to finally break. So it did 487 cycles. That is a lot. And for something that's one time use, that's uh, a lot of life left in them when you use them only one time. Now. Bending it 90 degrees, like this guy here, it broke after a whopping 44 cycles. So, 10 times more life in it by bending it 15 degrees as compared to bending it 90 degrees. Literally, 487, 44. Now, you might be saying, hey, why? What's it matter? It's one time use. Well, the thing is, when you bend it, you just stressed it. And then, based on those numbers, you can assume that one cycle represents X percentage of its usable life, and that's how much stress is in the metal, and then it finally will break. Let's do some math here, because math is fun. So, 1 divided by 487 gives 0 0.0020 blah blah blah, which comes out to be 0.2% of its life was consumed in that one little bend, okay? Now let's do the 90 degree bend. 1 divided by 44 because it's that one time that you bend it out of its 44 possible bends before it breaks, that comes out to be 0.0227. So that means that that one time you bent it, you just stressed it out. 2.27% of its usable life. So what that means is that you just stressed it a lot, like 10 times more than the other kind. So that means that when sails and halyards and everything up there hits your clevis pins and your cotter pins and is just banging up on everything, 10 times more resilience than this. You might bend them so they're out of the way, but then if they get hit by anything, they're 10 times more stressed and 10 times more prone to breaking because it's 10 times more fatigued. This was where I set it in a cotter, in a clevis pin in the vise and then just wrenched on it a million times. <sighs> I don't recommend doing that. But then I thought, well, okay, it's kind of shimming around in there. It's not really bending at like the same point every time and there's a lot of mobility so maybe it's not the most accurate form even though, you know, this is how a cotter pin is used in the hole of a clevis pin. So I thought, let me do a second one because I apparently just love abusing my life and just, you know, cranking on a cotter pin's leg until it breaks. That, that seems to be how I spend my nights, alone in a garage, standing next to a vise, just cranking away with a wrench on a poor little cotter pin's leg until it just snaps off. So, I did a second test with the vise, and that held the head really tightly 
so there was less mobility. Not none, because looking at the footage, there was some mobility, but a lot less. And those had some different numbers to them. 15 degrees, it broke after 545 cycles. 90 degrees, broke after 85 cycles. Still a huge difference. I I'm sorry, like that is just, like one never even made it to 100 and the other one went into the hundreds. So, because math is fun, that one cycle of 15 degrees represents one divided by 545, which is 0.18%. That is correct, 0.18%. So you can just round up to 0.2% stressed, which means that in essence you have 99.8% life left in that cotter pin's legs. Okay, the other one, one divided by 85, 0.0117, so in essence, you can round up, it was 1.2% used up. So that means that you have 1.2 would be 98.8%. Quite a difference when you're talking 500 cycles and 85 cycles. You're stressing them so far, and I must say, it was so much work to make this demonstration piece because this is how people that bend them really far do, where they like bend it literally so that the legs of the cotter pin are going into the ears of the head of the cotter pin. Like what kind of sadist wants to shove the legs into the ears? Make it happy. Little dude's head, here's his legs, and they're, they're down, they're not in his ears. This isn't boat yoga, this is rigging. Have fun with your rigging and uh... Just based on these tests, I'd suggest going with the uh, cotter pins leg spreading that's mentioned in uh, several rigging books where it's just this, just 15 degrees. If you found this video informative or helpful, why don't you subscribe, check us out. We got a whole bunch of videos, so we've been traveling all over the place by sail. We have an electric engine, which means that we have to travel by sail because we have pretty much no range. So we sail everywhere, all the time, every time. And uh, when we get places, then we go explore those places because we just spent a long time sailing there. And now we want to see this place that we just arrived. So check out our videos and enjoy.
ultimate power
sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.